Ever wondered about the differences between AI, ML, DL, and DS? Well, we're about to explore all of those today. Stay tuned. So let's dive right into it. So AI versus ML versus DL versus DS. A whole bunch of jargon, but we're going to clarify all of that right up. So let's kick things off and take a look at AI. So AI is really to do with the ability of computers and machines to perform tasks without explicitly programming them otherwise known as the ability for computers and machines to think by themselves. So we typically break out AI into two key categories. These are general AI and narrow AI. General AI typically refers to the ability for a computer or a machine to be able to handle a wide variety of tasks. Us as humans have the ability to do a whole heap of stuff. We can see, we can speak, we can hear, we can read, we can drive, we can do a whole range of things. The ability for AI and machines to be able to do a broad range of tasks similar to humans is what we typically refer to as general AI. Now, we're still a little bit of a while away from true general AI, but that's not to say it's not to come. Now, narrow AI, on the other hand, is the ability for a machine to handle a really simple or a really narrow range of tasks. So that could possibly be the ability to translate speech to text or to classify images as having different categories or the ability to predict house prices, for example. All of these are examples of narrow AI. So I'm going to be painting a bunch of visual imagery to help you remember some of these topics. So the first one in terms of breaking out general and narrow AI or the ability to remember general and narrow AI is just picture a really narrow or really skinny general in your mind. So that way you know that there's two different types of AI, general and narrow. Now onto the next topic, machine learning. So we've taken a look at AI as being broken up into general and narrow, but how does machine learning fit into this? Well, machine learning is the application of narrow AI to specific tasks. Now, when we typically talk about machine learning, we often compare it to traditional programming. So in traditional programming, we supply data, plus rules or conditional logic, and we get answers. Now in machine learning, on the other hand, we provide data plus historical answers to get rules. We can then pass new data to get new answers. So this is a bit of a change in the paradigm of how computer scientists and machine learning engineers are building programs these days. So what are some typical machine learning tasks? Well, we broadly break out machine learning into three key categories. These are supervised learning, unsupervised learning and semi-supervised learning. So let's take a look at supervised learning first. So supervised learning can be broadly broken out into two key categories. These are classification and regression. Classification is all to do with grouping things into categories or labels. So say you had a big data set on all the different types of pizzas you've liked and whether or not you've liked them, yes or no. You could take that data and pass it through to a classification algorithm to help it learn which types of pizzas you like. So then when you pass through a new list of ingredients, it would be able to predict, yes, you would like that pizza or no, you might not. Regression, on the other hand, is all to do with predicting continuous variables. Some great examples of regression are sales forecasting and predicting prices of houses. So that encapsulates supervised learning. Now, what about unsupervised learning? Well, there's two key things to think about when you think of unsupervised learning. These are really clustering, so the ability to group people together. So say you wanted to group together high performing and low performing and medium performing employees or high value, low value, medium value customers or a whole bunch of other different types of data. But really, it's all to do with grouping things together. Now, dimensionality reduction, on the other hand, is all to do with condensing the features that you've got within a machine learning model. So a lot of the time you might start out with a huge data set with a lot of columns and you're not really sure which of those columns are important for your machine learning model. Dimensionality reduction helps you reduce the number of columns that you've got so that you can really focus on the important ones. Now, in order to remember supervised learning and unsupervised learning, I'd suggest you remember this initialism, Christopher Robin quarter duck. So that way you remember classification, regression, clustering, and dimensionality reduction. So that takes care of supervised and unsupervised learning, but what about semi-supervised learning? Well, this is where reinforcement learning comes in. Now, reinforcement learning has four key things. These are an agent, an action, an environment, and a reward. It's similar to how you might choose to condition a dog. A dog might do something right, and you might reward it with a piece of food. In a similar way, we train reinforcement learning models to act in a correct way in a given environment in order to learn appropriate actions given that specific environment. Now, the best way to remember reinforcement learning techniques is to remember 
area 51. So that way you remember agent, reward, environment, and actions. Okay, so that takes care of machine learning. Now we're gonna delve a little bit deeper and get into deep learning. So deep learning is a subset of machine learning, and really it's to do with performing machine learning tasks using deep neural networks. Now, deep neural networks are networks that have multiple hidden layers. So if you've ever seen a diagram that looks sort of like this, this is a representation of a neural network. But specifically in this case, this is a deep neural network because it has multiple hidden layers. Now, the best way to remember deep learning is to remember that deep learning is just like an onion. It has multiple layers, a little bit like Shrek. Now, that sort of covers AI, ML, and DL. What about data science? Well. Data science is the practice that sits over AI, ML, and DL. It basically is the art of extracting knowledge, insight, and meaning from data. The best way to remember the key components of data science are to look at the CRISP-DM framework. So the CRISP-DM framework stands for the Cross-Industry Standard Process for Data Mining. And basically, it's a framework to help you along your way to producing really good data science projects. Now, there's six key steps in the data science process. These are business understanding. So understanding the business that you're working with and the environment in which they operate. Two, data understanding. So understanding the data that you've got on hand. So whether or not you've got missing values, visualizing that data and taking a look at some summary statistics. We've then got data preparation. So this is all to do with getting our data ready for modeling. In this step, we might perform some feature engineering and create some new columns. We might fill in some missing values and a whole bunch of other data preparation steps, like for example, splitting our data into training and testing. Next, we've got my favorite, which is modeling. This is all to do with training your machine learning algorithms to perform well on a specific task. Once we've trained our models in that modeling step, we get onto evaluation. Given that we've trained our model, we want to make sure that it's going to work well once we deploy it into the real world. This is what the evaluation step is all about. In this step, we try to check whether or not our model is likely to perform well using specific evaluation metrics. Now, once we've gone through all of that, the last step is to go and deploy our model. In order to deploy our model, we could release it as a REST API, containerize it up or save it as a binary so we can go and use it elsewhere. Now, a great way to remember CRISPDM is to remember Barry drove directly to the medical emergency department. That way you remember business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, evaluation, and deployment. Now, I've talked a lot about theory, but where do the Python packages that you typically see used fit into this framework? Well, in terms of data science, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib are probably gonna be the most important packages that you see floating around. NumPy and Pandas help you traverse and explore your data and really work with your data in terms of performing manipulations and data preparation. Matplotlib and Seaborn help you visualize that data and explore it even further. Now, the most important library in terms of machine learning is probably Scikit-learn. So Scikit-learn has been around for quite some time and gives you a whole bunch of really powerful algorithms and utilities to help use them to train your machine learning models. Now, deep learning is becoming increasingly popular and there's a large number of libraries that can help you perform deep learning. Some of which, which are notable, are TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, and Theano, just to name a few. And that about wraps up AI versus ML versus DL versus DS. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Until next time, peace.